Today's show is sponsored by the Electric Vehicle Association. Join up to support the electrification of transport and get the help you need to finance your own EV or clean energy future. And by Energy Sage. Visit the link in the description to find a local verified solar installers and community solar projects in your area that will help you power your home and your car with clean, green, renewable energy. And by you. Support the show with a monthly donation through Patreon or YouTube. Make a one-time donation with Kofi or Bitcoin, buy some swag from our store, or book our services through our new consultancy service. Welcome back to TEN or Transport Evolved News. It's the final live recorded news roundup show of the year. More on next week's special soon. So sit down with your favourite beverage and put your feet up. Solar energy has really helped lower the overall carbon footprint of the world's electrical grid this year, with a massive growth in solar deployment as solar panels become cheaper. Yet, while solar panels are now at their most cost-effective, they're still not super efficient. The best commercial solar panels on sale today turn about 20% of the solar radiation that hits them into electrical energy. Higher efficiency levels have been reached in the lab, but with the best solar cell to date managing an efficiency of 29.8%, there's still a way to go. That record was broken this week by a new tandem solar cell featuring a top cell made of silicon and a bottom cell made of perscovite developed by a team of researchers at the Helmholtz Zentrum Berlin. The same team, by the way, responsible for the previous world record for solar cell efficiency. This could have a big impact on future solar panel designs. Tesla is no stranger to alleged employment law violations, having been sued plenty of times in the past by former employees alleging illegal behaviour by the automaker. This week, a new case was brought in the form of a complaint to the National Labour Relations Board. Tesla stands accused of firing two employees because they were discussing and drafting letters critical of Elon Musk. According to Bloomberg, the complaints were discussing, quote, Tesla's failure to enforce its non-harassment policy and its implementation of its post-COVID return to office policy, end quote. It reports that no official letters were sent to executives at the company and notes that one of the people fired was given a pay raise a few days before the alleged illegal firing took place. If we are honest, there's a lot of unanswered questions here on both sides, clouding the clarity of this story. As winter temperatures begin to bite in the Northern Hemisphere, we're seeing the usual seasonal barrage of FUD confidently claiming that electric vehicles suck in cold weather. Yes, electric vehicles do suffer reduced efficiency and range in cold weather like any other vehicle. But most EV owners will quite happily tell you that with a few considerations like using preconditioning, their EVs are fine when the mercury drops. Now there's official data to back that up, with recurrent auto using reworld data from Ford Mustang Mark E and Volkswagen ID4 cars, as well as feedback from more than 10,000 EV drivers, to show that while EV owners are more cautious about taking longer distance trips in winter, they just tend to charge more frequently. While EV drivers are more conservative about range in winter, this data shows that they're most certainly not getting stranded. Plug-in hybrids, or in some cases range-extended EVs, can be great transitional vehicles for those looking to make the switch to a lower emission lifestyle. However, as we've said plenty of times before, switching to a plug-in hybrid or range-extended EV only pays dividends if you charge as much as possible. And when testing agencies like the EPA calculate estimated fuel economies for plug-in hybrids, they take that into account. Yet a new study from the International Council on Clean Transportation shows that official EPA estimates for how much a plug-in hybrid is driven in electric mode is heavily exaggerated for most vehicles. It's just analysed data that shows plug-in hybrids spend 26 to 56% less time in all-electric mode than EPA tests suggest. This means they're far less efficient to own. 
That's down to the individual driver, of course, and how much they use their car. So if you do want better efficiency, you've got to plug in. But maybe also the EPA should adjust the testing metrics to reflect this fact. It's a well-known fact that electric vehicle charging infrastructure around the world has a bit of a reliability issue, with some charging networks more notorious than others. Now EV owners have a new thing to worry about, the cybersecurity of charging stations they're using. That's because a new study from Sandia National Laboratories is highlighting some pretty glaring cybersecurity flaws with EV charging infrastructure. The study, which took four years to complete and was funded by the US Department of Energy, details everything from potential credit card skimming at charging stations through to cloud server vulnerabilities that expose charging providers' back-end services. Every type of charging station examined had some cybersecurity flaws present, and the report lists several policies it thinks charging operators should immediately implement. It's only been a few weeks since Tesla officially began deliveries of the Tesla Semi, with its first customer, PepsiCo, taking ownership of several Tesla Semis at a special event in Nevada. It's already using those trucks in the wild, and we've heard from several of you telling us about Tesla Semi glimpses you've got on the road. But this week, PepsiCo Vice President Mike O'Connell made a strange statement to Reuters, suggesting PepsiCo is planning to use the Tesla Semis to haul Frito-Lay food products on relatively long-distance trips of up to 425 miles, that's 684 kilometers, but will only haul sodas for trips of around 100 miles, 160 kilometers in length. That could be seen as a hint at worry over range. However, as some folks have noted, Pepsi has many more facilities than Frito-Lay, so shorter distance trips hauling Pepsi products are much more common. Chevrolet is recalling certain model year Bolt EVs to address a fire risk, but unlike the last fire-related recall involving the Bolt EV, this one has nothing to do with the car's battery pack. As detailed in the official recall paperwork, Chevrolet has decided, out of an abundance of caution, to recall most early Chevrolet Bolt EVs after it was discovered that the carpet in those vehicles could catch fire after activation of a seatbelt pretensioner. Designed to activate in a split second in the event of an impact, pretensioners tighten the seatbelt to reduce passenger injury on impact and, like airbags, rely on a small explosive charge to operate. Chevy says that in a few cases, activation of a seatbelt pretensioner has led to hot components coming into contact with the carpet and starting a fire. Remedial recall work will involve fitting a heat shield in relevant areas to protect the carpet from potential sparks. We've often asked on the channel what the impacts of driving an electric vehicle are compared to a comparable gasoline vehicle. Sometimes the exact comparison is hard to make because there's not always a direct model-to-model -model comparison, but this week Ford published its first sustainable financing report that happened to make some very nice direct comparisons. In addition to detailing to investors where its massive electric vehicle investment dollars were going, Ford compared the F-150 Lightning to an ICE pickup, a Mustang Mark e rear will drive to an ICE SUV and the Ford E-Transit low roof to an ICE Transit. It showed that during each vehicle's lifetime, they could save 78, 42 and 55 metric tons of carbon dioxide respectively. And knowing the fossil fuel industry has been proven to consistently underestimate its CO2 impact, we can assume this is a significant underestimate of the actual savings. It shows yet again that going electric really is a good long-term investment for you and the planet. CNN Business reported this week that police reports made available to it following a public records request detailed the driver of a Model S responsible for a multi-car pileup on Thanksgiving Day is blaming Tesla full self-driving beta for the incident. Video captured of the accident appears to show the Tesla changing lanes and suddenly braking while crossing the I-80 eastbound on the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. That led to an eight-car pileup. The driver alleges they were using full self-driving beta at the time of the incident, but the police have told CNN that they could not determine if that was the case, stating Tesla will have that information in its system. NHTSA is already investigating the crash and says it's working with police and Tesla on collecting pertinent data. Tesla has not made an official statement at this time, but we should reiterate that Tesla does say FSD beta should be supervised at all times. 
the United States Treasury Department has delayed its official release of full guidance on qualifications for EV tax credits under the recently signed Inflation Reduction Act. Under this new act, signed by President Biden in the fall, individual eligibility for federal tax incentives when purchasing a plug-in car depends on household income, vehicle sticker price, location of manufacture, and where various materials and components used in each vehicle came from. The intent is to reduce the total tax credit available for cars built with non domestically produced battery packs, a move that's caused quite a lot of diplomatic frustration around the world. Ultimately, eligibility will be something of a red tape minefield, but with the rules not set to be published now until March, this delay could soften the numbers of electric cars sold before then as buyers try to second-guess available incentives. Short shorts are coming in a second, but first, a little word about one of today's video sponsors, Energy Sage. Energy Sage is an online service in the US that helps homeowners connect with local, verified solar installers who really know their stuff and can help you navigate the process of installing photovoltaic solar panels on your home, or can help you join a local community solar program. We used Energy Sage when we were looking at installers willing to help put solar panels on the roof of our home, and our Energy Sage verified installers were professional, knowledgeable, and even put us in touch with an amazing credit union to help us finance our solar panels for as low a monthly payment as possible. I know that we have just officially entered winter in the Northern Hemisphere, but thanks to the recently signed Inflation Reduction Act, tax credits for solar panels will be a healthy 26% next year before falling to 22% the year after. So if you are looking to go solar, now is the perfect time to plan your install for next year. Follow the link in the description below to sign up for Energy Sage's free, no obligation service. And if you do choose to use an Energy Sage installer for your solar project, we will get a small referral fee. So you'll be helping us too. And now it's time for short shorts. Cadillac has confirmed that it intends to cut the sticker price of its Cadillac Lyric SUV for the 2024 model year. While the price is dropping by two to three thousand dollars, Cadillac warns the dropped price reflects changes in options and specs. The Genesis G80 electrified full-size luxury sedan, our review for which we posted this week, has been given the IIHS's Top Safety Pick Plus Award for performing well in the agency's suite of crash tests. The Top Safety Pick Plus Award is the highest rating from the IIHS. Similarly, the IIHS has also given the Rivian R1T the same award for acing its crash tests. While it's fairly common to see passenger cars and SUVs earn Top Safety Pick Plus Awards, very few pickup trucks of any size have managed to perform well enough to earn it. Hyundai has officially unveiled the redesigned Kona SUV, calling the redesign a, quote, EV-led design with unique styling across a range of powertrains, end quote. In English, it means the Kona will be available as an EV, a hybrid, an ICE vehicle, and a, quote, unquote, sporty ICE N-line. Lion Electric, a Canadian firm specialising in electric commercial vehicles and school buses, has officially produced its first in-house lithium-ion battery pack. Previously, it used battery packs made by third-party suppliers, but is switching to in-house battery packs instead. Just a few weeks after leaving Vietnam, VinFast's first shipment of VF8 electric SUVs have arrived in the US. A total of 999 VF8s have rolled onto the docks in Los Angeles, with the first customer deliveries scheduled to happen before the end of this year. Motorcycle startup Rivid has just been awarded a total of $20 million in grants from the state of California to help it bring its Anthem electric motorcycle into full-scale production. The Anthem is designed as a highway-capable, short-range commuter motorbike. Porsche has officially confirmed it will be offering new and existing customers the chance to upgrade the onboard charging unit in their Porsche Taycans, unlocking a total of 19.4 kilowatts of onboard charging capability, which will dramatically slash home level 2 charging times. Everati has officially produced its first all-electric classic Porsche 911, a 964 model, for the US market. Finished in Mexico blue, the car has a sub-four-second sprint time and will be shipped to the US to meet its probably very excited owner very shortly. Volkswagen, like many automakers, has found it necessary to raise the price of its electric cars this year thanks to inflation. This week, we learned that the 2023 model year ID4 will get a $1,500 price hike for all models made there in the US after January 4th. 
Fox eMobility, the company that's trying to bring the Mia compact city car back to life in the form of the redesigned Mia 2.0, has confirmed that it's delaying said vehicle's launch due to quote unquote financial restructuring. We'll keep you posted. Shell has officially converted one of its oldest filling stations in the Netherlands, a site that's existed since the 1930s, into an electric car only charging site. There's plenty of on site rapid charging, and we cannot wait to see more filling stations follow suit. Lucid Motors has officially begun deliveries of its Lucid Air Dream Edition range and Lucid Air Dream Edition performance to customers in Europe. Given Lucid recently aced its Euro NCAP crash tests, we did know it wouldn't be too long before deliveries began in earnest. Tesla has begun to add third-party charging sites to its in-car route planning software for customers in Israel and Europe. However, the company says sites will only be added if they achieve high reliability and use, otherwise they will be unceremoniously removed from said database. The US states of Oregon, Washington and Vermont have all officially adopted California's Clean Car 2 rule, meaning they too will ban the sale of all internal combustion engine light duty cars, trucks and SUVs by 2035. This is great news for EVs. The US EPA has published the first of the new truck emission rules to be planned for more than 20 years. It claims the new emission targets are 80% tougher and will reduce emissions significantly, but environmental groups say the rules aren't anywhere near strict enough. After successfully completing test programs where it used human solar hybrid cargo bikes to carry out home deliveries in the Netherlands, IKEA says it will make the same cargo bikes available to IKEA retailers around the world. It wants to become climate positive. Solid-state battery specialists QuantumScape, whose investors include the Volkswagen Group, have shipped the first of their 24-layer prototype lithium metal battery cells to automakers for validation. Completing successful validation is essential to greenlighting series production. Back in November, Canoe announced its first production facility would be located in Oklahoma City. Now it's been told by the city's mayor that if it can reach its promised production goals, it will receive up to $1 million in voter-approved additional funding. Porsche has officially opened its first e-fuels pilot plant. Located in Chile, the facility will produce synthetic fuels using hydrogen from water and carbon captured from the air. Porsche claims e-fuels can replace gasoline to make ice vehicles cleaner. As we barrel towards the end of the year and the end of the quarter, Tesla has increased available discounts on new cars to encourage people to buy now rather than wait for next year's new US tax incentives. Tesla needs those sales as its share price continues to tumble. A new patent which surfaced this week suggests that Mazda is busy working on a new electric model that we hope won't be anything like the MX-30. According to the patent drawings, the new EV has an incredibly thin battery pack which hints at a possible solid-state setup. Despite an ongoing investigation from NHTSA into incidents of its vehicles randomly stopping on the public highway, GM's robo-taxi division Cruise says it's readying to expand its service into other US cities, including Austin, Texas and Phoenix, Arizona. As Tesla shares fall to their lowest level for more than two years, Tesla is reportedly set to lay off more staff after the holidays, as well as place a hold on all new hirings. It's something that Elon Musk warned might happen back in June, so it's not really a surprise. Volvo's brand new all-electric SUV, the Volvo EX90, may not be due to enter into production quite yet, but this week Motor Trend broke a news story that suggests the entry-level EX90 will have two, not three rows of seats and be rear-wheel rather than all-wheel drive. Rivian has written to customers who ordered quad motor max pack variants of its R1T to let them know that they will now have to choose either a dual motor with a max pack or a quad motor with a smaller battery pack. Quad motor plus max pack is no longer an available option. Solid Power announced this week that it's agreed to license its solid state battery manufacturing processes to BMW to allow the automaker to work alongside its teams to accelerate research and development of long range solid state battery packs. Electrical vertical takeoff and landing company Air has posted a video celebrating the first full transitional flight of its Air One. What's a transitional flight? Well, that's the name given to the process where an e VTOL craft switches from vertical takeoff and hovering to cruising. 
Acura has teased images of its upcoming ZDX electric car undergoing testing at one of its facilities. Honda says the ZDX will debut next year as a 2024 model year vehicle and will be offered in both standard and Type S performance guises. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next year. Now it's time for another teaser trailer and this time it's for a very silly video that's due to drop at the start of next week. Our sort of holiday special. Those of you who follow us on on the socials will know that we had the Hummer EV a few weeks ago and the Kia Nero EV a few weeks before that but we couldn't help ourselves. Enjoy and join us for the live premiere on Boxing Day. If you are a Patreon supporter you will get access to that video a little earlier. This year, we've seen electric bicycles really take off, with more choice in the electric bicycle marketplace than I think we have ever seen before. But as we've covered on this channel before, exactly what's considered a road legal electric bicycle varies greatly from region to region and country to country, meaning that some e-bikes being sold and used today aren't technically road legal. This has caused Bosch, one of the leaders in e-bike motors, to call for the US to adopt stricter standards governing electric bicycle use. It argues that current regulations in North America are just too confusing and nebulous and notes that stricter safety standards, as found in Europe for example, would make e bikes bikes safer and easier to understand for consumers. With some e-bikes being sold in the US fitted with motors that place them near to motorcycles in terms of power, we can actually see the benefits of tighter, more transparent rules. And finally, for the last few years, the US Postal Service under current Postmaster General Lewis DeJoy has been in a bit of a power struggle with the White House over mail trucks. DeJoy, who was appointed to the position by former President Trump, opted to order primarily gasoline-powered mail trucks under the US Post Office's Next Generation Delivery Vehicle Program, which was a big thing last year, making excuses as to why a primarily electric fleet wouldn't be a good idea for the future. In contrast, the Biden administration, which has pushed very hard for a future all-electric federal fleet, has said the exact opposite. They had been at an impasse, but this week it appears there's been a breakthrough, with the White House announcing that from 2026 onwards, all delivery mail trucks purchased by the US Postal Service will be electric. It's backed by a $9.6 billion investment, so watch this space. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, a huge thank you to the Electric Vehicle Association for sponsoring today's show. They have been advocating for electric vehicles since 1967 and firmly believe that our future depends on us making the switch to clean green electric cars today. The EVA can help you find someone near to you that can help you make the switch to electric. It can help you become an EV educator and it can point you in the direction of monthly meetups for like-minded EV fans. And if you become a member, you'll gain access to a brand new clean energy and EV loan program set up between the EVA and the Colorado Clean Energy Credit Union. So find out more by heading to electricauto.org. And because this is our last live show of the year, I would like to thank everyone who has supported us this year through Patreon, YouTube, Bitcoin, Ko-fi, or by buying our swag from our swag store, either in person or online. This year really wouldn't have been possible without your help. And finally, thanks to Energy Sage. Follow the link below to find out how easy it can be to get verified, trustworthy solar experts helping you make the step towards energy self-sufficiency, either through solar on your home or through a local community solar project. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and the bell for this channel and our second channel, Transport Evolve Take Two. And in addition to becoming a Patreon supporter or a YouTube channel member, 
you can tip us through Ko-fi or check out our cool swag store. And if you do like what you saw today, why not consider adding a super thanks to your comment? It is super easy to do and it does help our channel grow. And while you are off for the holidays, why not check out our new consultancy services? We are taking bookings for 2023 and we are happy to offer individual consulting as well as corporate and talks about EVs. Next week, we are taking the week off from a live show, but we've got a bit of a roundup of our favorite stories of the year. Yes, it's a clip show. And I'll be back in January as usual, as will the rest of the team. And do check out our Sunday musings over on Take Two and our live stream for our transparency report towards the end of next week. Whatever you enjoy next, I hope that your weekend is a great one. If you are celebrating the holidays, I hope you have a wonderful, peaceful and safe time. And on behalf of the entire team, Happy New Year. As always, keep evolving.